All right, super nerds. So today we're going to look at volcanoes. Um, remember we said that you're looking at, we're also looking at the way different scientists will, or thinking about ways different scientists would interact with scientists from other fields. Well, this is one where we can look specifically at the effects on the rocky, the rocky area. So there's your, your geologists. Uh, local environments after us. So there's ecologists, which are a type of biologist. Um, the change in chemical composition of waters surrounding the atmosphere, that's chemists. And the impact on the atmosphere in general, and that tends to be meteorologists and climatologists. So there's a whole range of scientists which have to work together to deal with, well, I mean, to deal with volcanoes. So, what's the point? Basically, by the end of this, you want to be able to understand what a volcanic eruption is, and you also want to be able to explain the short-term and long-term effects of volcanic eruptions on both the natural and built environments. So, why would they have these effects? Um, that's a pretty red volcano. All right, so what do you need to remember? Basically, you need to remember that the geospheres all interact through various cycles. Okay, so we know this. You also want to know that volcanoes, or remember that volcanoes, they're generally cone-shaped mountains, not always, of course, but they're generally cone-shaped mountains or hills created by molten material that rises up from the interior of the earth to the surface. And they tend to occur along the edges of tectonic plates, not always, but that's where they tend to occur. And the violent eruption is when the pressure builds up underneath here, and eventually blasts the top of that mountain off. Um, so eruptions and lava flows associated with them, they can be really destructive. Um, in fact, they only go from a little bit destructive to a lot destructive. It's not really, it's rarely that they're not destructive. In fact, they can't be not destructive at all because you've got melting hot rock flowing down the side of a mountain and stuff will be on the side of the mountain regardless. So this is what a volcano is. You probably want to draw this. So you've got your magma chamber and it pushes up through the conduit or the pipe or the main vent but in fact this tends to be the name we use the main vent it pushes up to the main vent and eventually it causes it to explode um, just have a quick look here this is the volcanic cone which is the mountain and you can see that it's built up from different layers from previous eruptions so while it's destructive it's also productive and it produces these new mountains so you get these new mountain ranges or new islands, etc., from just different eruptions as it pushes through. So yes, stuff will build up over time along the side here, the trees or whatever, and this will take it out, but eventually it will come back. And volcanic soil is super, super fertile. It grows, like stuff grows in that soil really, really easily. So anyway, here's your main vent, your cone, and it pushes through and just bam, bam crashes out the top. Now, at the top, you get an ash cloud which has some pretty serious gases in there, namely sulfur dioxide. Now that's that's pretty bad. We don't want you don't want to be breathing that in. Um, you also get steam coming out the side here. These are what we call the side vents or branch pipes, and they make these little parasitic cones. And you can see that because it's coming out, it's going to then you know make a new little cone here. You also get volcanic bombs. So that's just essentially glowing hot rocks that just go. Boom get launched at the side. So that's a volcano. Now what are the effects? You might want to make a list of these. Uh, we've got the two pictures on here because they've got um, slightly different information. We'll start with this one first. Okay, so the eruption comes up. Your little lava dome here. You can get landslides. This will take out entire like ecosystems there. And that's a long-term effect. That's not a that's not recovered from very easily at all. So there's your landslides. Pyroclastic. Pyro means fire. And the clast means rocks. So it's essentially, I think, it doesn't matter. So it's like your fiery rocks. That's your lava flow um, coming down. So pyroclastic flow is your lava flow down this way. You get lahar. Now, lahar is a great word. And it means debris. So it's like all the rocky debris and stuff that's moving down the mountain. Okay, so you got landslide, lava flow, rocky debris, or laha. You should know that word. You also get the eruption column. This is, and more pyroclastic flow and landslide down this way. 
this eruption column is just gas that's going straight up, gases and ash, and then the wind hits it, and it blows it sideways. Okay, so it goes with the wind, because it's fairly light, so it just goes up and then down. Now, over here, we move in this one, because that's what we need here, um, you've also got the pyroclastic bombs flying out, going boom, boom, crushing stuff. Um, but here you've got the tephra fall or ash fall. So this is the ash falling out of the cloud, and that causes big problems. But what also happens is it rains out. It rains out of the cloud. That's crazy. So this up here, it causes all the water in the in the air, the atmosphere, the water vapor, to bind around, to nucleate around the little particles. So then it just starts raining. And everyone's like, hey, we've got lava, rain. Except it's acid rain, and that's bad. You don't want that, but that's going to happen. So you get the eruption cloud here, and then you get acid rain coming out of the side. So that's a little added bonus that we didn't see coming, isn't it? Um, so this okay, is a hot, fiery mess. That looks bad. Except it also has this weird side effect. Cooling. Okay, so we now basically we're just looking at this. It can cause cooling, and some volcanic eruptions can cause global cooling that can last for quite a while. And the recent volcano in, I'm going to say Iceland, and I'm not going to try and name it because it will like, I don't know it. It's a, it's a tough word to say. Look it up if you don't believe me, and then you try and say it. But what happens is, where's my ass? There's my ass. This giant cloud comes out, and with our case study we're going to look at, you'll see how big that cloud is. The sun comes down, and it absorbs a lot of the infrared. Okay, cool. But it also reflects a lot of sunlight away, which means it's going to get darker down here, and it's going to get cooler. But it's also going to get weirdly stable. And the reason it's going to get weirdly stable is, is although it's... So it gets initial cooling, so that comes off, right? So the solar is being reflected away, but the infrared radiation coming from the Earth, which bounces up and leaves normally, it doesn't leave. It's actually, it should be reflected down. It, it comes straight, it comes back down. So essentially it creates a blanket. So as you've got this going on, but you've also got this leaving, you get this weird constant temperature and we'll, we'll say so initial cooling and then it, stay, it stabilizes and that's weird we'll look at that in a minute um but yeah anyway let's look at mount st helens you're all familiar with a before and after photo of weight loss but this is a phenomenal one so let's have a look so here's a before photo and here is something that's lost millions of tons of weight um this was taken on, I believe, May the 1st or May the 2nd or something like that. This is the day after a massive eruption. So what happened? Let's find out. So in the northwest of the USA, this is pretty much what we're going to focus on for the rest of it, on the May 18th of 1980. Um, an eruption removed the top 400 metres of this mountain. Top 400 metres. 57 people died, okay, so the volcano, <coughs> the volcanic eruption and essentially people not being prepared to leave or move, um, 57 died, uh, and some of it wasn't lack of preparation, some of it was it did catch people by surprise, um, but yeah, ash and pyroclastic flow from a lateral blast, which is this side here, not going up, but going sideways. In fact, it actually comes down this way. Travelling at more than 480 kilometres per hour. So this explosion blew the side of the mountain off at about 480 kilometres per hour. It blew down and scorched about 600 square kilometres of forest and human settlements. Let's have a look at this lake here. It's actually a river, sorry. How about this river? That river's not there anymore. I don't know if it's there today, um, or if there's... Obviously, something will have... There's a water flow there somewhere, there has to be. But that river doesn't exist anymore. 
So the volcanic ash cloud drifted east, so the wind was going east, <laughs> across the United States in three days. So it covered the United States in three days. It had gone entire way around the Earth, this ash cloud, in about 15 days. Now, locally, where this happened, there was actually a significant temperature drop. So after the blast, the temperature dropped, and then it remained constant for 12 hours. And that was due to solar radiation um, that couldn't get in, and the infrared couldn't get out, so it just kind of balanced out for about 12 hours until the ash started to clear a little bit. So now, we're going to move on. Um, that's kind of the end of the note taking, which is a long one, I know, and we're just going to focus on just some images of the devastation that happened with Mount St. Helens. These are all photos taken within a couple of days or so. Um, so here is it, hang on. I'm going to erase all the ink off the slide. Um, so here is it as it happened. As you can see it's starting to fly off. And then the shift down and then boom, just out sideways. Um, so here's the same thing. They've got the, the summit, so it's 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we've got the summit plume just going up and out. The lateral explosion just moving sideways here. So here we have before, during, and after. I mean, that, that's insane. Here is it during the eruption. Remember we said that the trees were knocked over? That's a whole forest. And you can see the flow. Like the way it's just moved across this way, on its way down the mountain. It's all combed it with it. Again, this is a whole forest that is now gone. Um, this is off the mountain. This is down the road. You can see everything's covered in ash. Um, this is all the pyroclastic flow that's moving down. And Lahara. Um, here's just a quick little map of, of what it did. All right. So if you're in this area here, there's the mountain. There's another mountain there. You got two to five inches of of ash as a layer. There's a layer of ash, two to five inches. One and a half to two inches like this entire area, like the United States is a big country. It's as big as we are. And that's that's a big chunk of land. And that's one and a half sorry, one half to one half to two inches of of ash and dust. And oh so that's the area. This here is like between one and a half sorry, from up to a half inch of, of dust landing on it. That was a lot. Um and most of it was pictures though, but Enjoy, and we'll see you in class. Volcanoes, they're rad.